It's Tel Aviv versus Kiryat Shimona. The game's tied at nothing nothing. The truth is, this match isn't really crucial. But don't tell that to these fans. For one player, there's more at stake than the outcome of the game. Number 19, Abbas Swan, is one of Israel's best midfielders. He made his mark representing the Jewish state on its national team. But he's not Jewish. He's Muslim and an Arab. On his home field in northern Israel, Swan feels perfectly at home alongside his Jewish teammates, speaking in Hebrew. All of us like one another and feel for one another. We visit each other on holidays and go to each other's parties. In bad times and good, we're together. Still, there are places, including Israel's capital, Jerusalem, where some fans single out players like Swan for special treatment. They curse the Prophet Muhammad. They shout and curse at me because I'm an Arab. I don't understand why. After the game, I go out to my car and find they've shattered the windows and stolen things. Swan is one of Israel's one and a half million Arab citizens. When Israel declared itself a Jewish state in 1948, it promised full equality to all citizens, regardless of race, religion, or gender. Arab Israelis have the right to vote. They sit in Israel's parliament, and one even serves in a cabinet post. Nowadays, Arabs comprise some 20% of the country's 7.5 million people. But according to Arab social activists, their communities receive only 5% of all development funds and have had much of what they consider their land expropriated by the government. As a result, their rural villages have grown into crowded towns and cities with little room for expansion, plagued by insufficient urban infrastructures. Officially, they're known as Arab Israelis, but many of them see things differently. We are Palestinians, live in Israel. We have a lot of issues here. So are you a citizen or are you not a citizen of Israel? Uh, it is a big question, really. I don't know. By the, my passport, I am citizen. By the rights, I am. I don't think so. Chaim Yavin, one of Israel's most respected broadcast journalists, set out to investigate claims of official discrimination against Arab Israelis. His conclusion? The Arabs in Israel are discriminating in every walk of life. Land, they don't get enough land. Water, they don't get enough water. high rises, buildings construction, you name it, education, beyond and above all, and jobs. It's hard to find data to back up many of these claims. The Israeli government does not release statistics broken down between its Jewish and Arab citizens. And while it does not deny that discrimination has occurred, Israeli officials say that the current government is making major efforts to bridge that gap. I think the government is doing a lot more than what we did in the past. We can see that. We invest in education, we invest in uh, infrastructures, in uh, all kinds of things like that. But, uh, and we see that there's a lot of more achievements uh, in the Arab society. But in order to be perfect, everybody needs to give a little bit more and more effort. And I think we're going to get there pretty soon. Yet Arab-Israeli's sense of belonging and loyalty are severely tested by Israel's ongoing conflict with their fellow Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. The result? Volatile and, on rare occasions, violent relations. Protests by Israeli Arabs were muted during the recent military operation in Gaza. But in 2000, when they rioted in support of the Palestinian uprising in the occupied territories, 12 Israeli Arabs were killed by government security forces. In its investigation, an official commission of inquiry determined that Arab rioters had indeed endangered Jewish lives, but also criticized police for using excessive force and accused Israel's government of systematically discriminating against the country's Arab citizens. This is a conflict that goes back a hundred years. There's fear on both sides. The Arabs are afraid that we are going to throw them into the, to the desert. We are afraid that they are going to throw us into the sea. So this mutual fear is very deep-rooted. So deep-rooted, in fact, that very few Arab Israelis serve in the Israeli army, one of the important shared experiences that molds Israeli society. In everyday life in Israel, Jews and Arabs rarely rub shoulders. Jews may agree that Arab restaurants serve the best hummus, but beyond that? What do you know about Arabs besides the food? Hello. 
No. I don't think so. <laughs> no. They have good food. Even in places like Jaffa, one of several mixed cities where Jews and Arabs do live side by side, usually in harmony, a sense of unease is often just beneath the surface. I think that will be a problem forever because everybody wants the land. But to treat... Itzik Sha'anan works for an organization that supports coexistence between Jews and Arabs. He also directs an anti-racism campaign in Israel's soccer stadiums. In spite of the racism, in spite of the behavior of the crowd sometimes, the, the soccer in Israel, it brings a new a, 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 a model of coexistence and of equal opportunity for all players. With the support of people like Sha'anan, new anti-racism laws were passed for sports venues, making racist remarks and activities a criminal offense punishable by up to two years in prison. However, in practice, offenders have not been harshly dealt with. But with years of mistrust and fear between them, and competing claims to the same land, with Jews here and Arabs there, leveling the playing field throughout Israeli society poses a far more daunting challenge. This is Michael Greenspan, reporting for World Focus in Israel.